Hi, welcome to She Matters. Today's Friday, the 4th of February. My name is Birgit Whelan and it's really great to be with you for the program today. The topic for the program today is the miracle working power of God. And we have some wonderful testimonies to share with you um, about miracles in the area of healing and finance. And we're hoping that the Lord would bless you and encourage you through these stories today. Um, we're also going to be talking about miracles in general, looking at biblical accounts accounts of miracles both in the, in, the, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament and asking the question, is God still in the business of miracles today? So if you have any stories or testimonies in this area, we would love to hear from you. So please do feel free to send in your emails or your texts. We'll be receiving those today. If you have any questions, that would be great too. Um, so we welcome you to the program today. And joining me to discuss this topic of miracles um, are my co-host, Denny Stone, and our very special guest, Dr. Richard Kent. So thank you both for being here today. Thank you, bless great. you. Yeah. Nice to be here. <laughs> well, I mean, it would be great just to, to launch straight in, Richard, because um, God has done some amazing things both in your life and in the life of, of your wife, Val. Yeah. And it would be really great just to hear about those stories because it's both in the area of healing and finance. So um, yeah. if you could just give us some examples of what God's done, that would be great. Well, that would be there. I'm just going to start off by saying that we've all had miracles, if yeah. you're a believer, because God chose us before the foundation of the earth. That's a miraculous thing. Amen. And then we were, when we were conceived in our mother's womb and formed in secret in our mother's womb, you know, to grow from a little grain of sand to a baby, you know, eight, eight pounds, whatever. Yeah. That's a miracle, isn't it, Daniel? Uh, and then, of course, when we were born again, so we can go to heaven. That's a miracle, mm -hmm. too. So that Absolutely. actually being born again is the biggest miracle. Yes, it is. But what I always say on this subject is that, God, that salvation is a, is a three-part process. Um, God wants our spirits to be saved so we can go to heaven. Yeah. But he also is concerned about our material, our financial and material needs, and also about our health. Yeah. So I just start with our health. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, my wife and I became believers in 1974, which is a long time ago. Um, and a while after that, about a year after that, she developed quite bad arthritis. And I, I'm a medical doctor, I was a GP actually. And so I did the blood test and she had a, what's called an RA latex test, which was positive, and a sheep cell agglutination test. They're different tests nowadays, but it was very positive and an ESR was very raised. And I was very worried because she was 28 years old. Wow. And uh, she had aching joints and, you know, she was beginning to, her fingers were beginning to swell and she was limping a bit. Can I just ask a question about that? Is that where there's an inflammation in the sort sure. of synovial fluid in the joints? That's is that right. What? There are two types of arthritis. There's yeah. osteoarthritis, which is the common wear and tear type. Right. But there's an autoimmune disorder called rheumatoid arthritis. Right. And that's the one that commonly affects young ladies. Because mm -hmm. obviously in my professional career, you did actually see quite a lot of ladies yeah. uh, ending up in wheelchairs. And of course, I didn't want that for my wife, Val. Yeah. But she wasn't worried about that. <laughs> she never worried about anything like that. She says, well, the Bible says in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits. Amen. So what's a benefit? Something you've received. He's forgiven all my sins and healed all my diseases. Oh, okay. So that's what she said. But she said, thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven all my sins. And thank you also forgiven, uh, sorry, healed all my diseases. Oh, okay. And by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. It says in the scriptures, I am the Lord who heals you. Yeah. And there are a lot of scriptures about healing. Anyway, Val just believed them and confessed them. And uh, it's very simple. The swelling went. Uh, we never repeated the blood test because the swelling went. And I just thought, well, I'm not going to you know, go there. The just swelling just stopped. So uh, wow. it took a few days and the swelling went down and she's never had it again. That's so that was the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it sounds simple, but well, it is simple. Um, it's so much simpler than taking pills for the rest of your life and everything else. But I absolutely love that, Richard, just that she had that absolute simple faith. She knew what the scriptures said. Yes. She didn't question it. She yes. just received the word of God, stood yeah. on it, believed it, and yeah. then saw the promises manifested sure. in quite an amazing way. I mean, the yeah. fact that, you know, if you, if you could look at her situation and think maybe for some people in her situation, they would have ended up in, in a wheelchair, but that wasn't what was in store for yeah. her because of, of this belief. It's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, in my own stuff, I do, I do what's 
facts, which yes. is proving the Bible is supernatural and all that sort of thing. And thus, I don't know why you bother with all that stuff. I do creation and evolution, proving that creation is what happened. Yeah. But I said, I don't know why you bother with all that, because of course God exists. Of course God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. And of course we're on our way to heaven. So she's not really interested in all that. She, she just says, I prefer just to read the Bible. You can do what you like, Richard. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, so what happened later on in the year 2000, um, I was actually working in the Caribbean at the time. And back here, um, she suddenly went blind in her left eye. And it was really frightening, actually, for yeah. her. Well, it would have been frightening, but she's, she's never been worried by these things at all. So they took her to Addenbrooke's Hospital in Cambridge, right. and they took photographs of her left eye, her retina, and she'd had a retinal vein thrombosis. She'd had a big clot at the back of her left eye. Okay. And basically, she could just make out uh, light and dark, but that's all she could make out. She couldn't see anything. Just light and dark was all she could see. Yeah. Well, the prognosis was very bad. They said, well, I'm very sorry, but, you know, you're never going to see again with your left eye. You just have to get used to using the other one. Is that where he hemorrhaging also happens in the retina as well? Sure. When there's that kind of block? No, it's no, it is a, a retinal vein thrombosis. It's right. like a clot. Yes. It's a clot at the back of the eye. Yeah. Uh, that one of the veins bursts, basically. And, right. it, and uh, I saw the photographs, and there's a, it's a big red clot at the yeah. back of her eye. Right. And um, anyway... Um, I was actually in the Caribbean, so I rang her up and said, do you want me to come home? She said, oh, of course not. No, no, you carry on, because I was working in a big church over there. Yeah. And she said, no, no, you, it's not a problem. God will sort it out, the same as he sorted out the other problem. <laughs> <laughs> and um, she was told to go home and be very quiet. They checked her for high blood pressure and diabetes and all that stuff, yeah. but she hadn't got any of that. She just had a retinal vein thrombosis, which is unusual, because she was about, uh, maybe about 50 at the time. Okay. Anyway, um, so she went home and, and said what she did before. Thank you, Lord, you've healed me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget all his benefits. He's forgiven all my sins and healed all my diseases. It says it in the same verse yeah. in Psalm 103. And you are the Lord who heals me. So despite the fact they got photographs that, that shows that I've got a retinal vein thrombosis and I'll never see again, um, I prefer to believe what the Bible says. Because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It says... And, G and Val said, well, I just prefer to believe that. They can do what they like with their photographs, but this is my God, and I believe in miracles. And, and, uh, wow. and actually it says in Mark chapter 11, it says, have faith in God. This Mark 11 verses 22, 24. It says, have faith in God. When you say to this mountain, a mountain is not like a big pile of dirt, it's like a big problem in your life, yeah. or my life, or Val's life in this situation. When you say to the big problem in your life, when you say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and do not doubt in your heart that it will be unto you even as you say, then it will be unto you even as you say. When you pray, believe that you receive it, and then you shall have it. So that's what my wife did. She said, thank you, Lord, I have received it. And she said, I can see beautifully, which sounds really crazy. So I came back from, <laughs> I came back from the Caribbean, and she said, I said, I'm really sorry. She said, well, what are you sorry about? I said, well, I'm really sorry. You, you can't see. She said, the Lord's healed me. She um, went back and, uh, to, to the hospital, saw the specialist up there, and yeah. they got a look at the eye charts. Couldn't see a thing, but not to worry. She just smiled. <laughs> yeah. And they said, uh, she said, the Lord's healed me. Don't worry about it. I don't know what they thought, but anyway. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this went on for nine months. And then suddenly, after nine months, she could see beautifully. And uh, she looked up at the eye chart, and um, she could actually see better. She could actually see better with the bad eye than the good eye. They thought she was cheating, so they, they moved <laughs> the chart around. <laughs> wow. and, and then they were absolutely amazed. They said, this has never happened before. Um, so they took more photographs, and the back of the eye was completely normal. So they got all the other from the department to come and have a look. I said, this is extraordinary. We haven't had this before. That's <laughs> and, yeah. and so that's, that's basically her story. So and it's obviously a, a real testimony to the medical staff as well. Yes, it was. It yeah. was an amazing testimony. Mm. In fact, she has to have checkups once a year uh, since then. And, of course, it was where we are. It's, it's 11 years ago now. And every year she goes along and has checkups. Um, and they look at the thing and they say, well, you could never have had a retinal vein thrombosis because there's no... There's nothing there to suggest that you've had a retinal vein thrombosis. And they said, well, I, I can show you I did. <laughs> but it's a good oh, testimony yeah, to give, really. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
And actually, at this point, Denny, yes. I know from talking with you just before the programme that you also have had um, a miracle. It would be great to hear about your miracles in finance too, Richard, but it would <laughs> no, be no, no, really good to hear Denny's all these really testimonies. Good. <laughs> so why don't you share about what happened in your own life? Yeah, I mean, like we were saying, God is a God of miracles, and his love is what reaches out to us all. Every day we get up is a miracle. Um, but yes, I, I mean, my husband and I lived in Spain, and I fell down the marble staircase and I banged my head and I thought no more about it. We were in the middle of moving back to UK so I was sort of busy um, and it wasn't till I was back here, I suppose a couple of weeks, I noticed that my balance was going a bit funny and things were starting to get where I couldn't quite hear right. and over a process I suppose of a month or so the hearing just went in that ear and I kept putting it off and I said well God made me he can put it right I don't need a doctor and I just sort of ignored it but when I drove my car it was a horrible feeling you feel like you're in a tunnel and you don't quite hear everything and it makes you very disorientated so I said to my husband I, I think I should go and get it just checked out and then I know what I'm praying for. Mm. So he said, okay, I went to the doctor and they took an x-ray and said, gosh, you've got a massive hole. You, you're gonna have to have surgery. And uh, I went home and I thought, hmm, I don't know about that. I don't want no sort of foreign hands. I said, God, you made me, you can put it right. It's gonna take a few months. They're gonna take time to come back to me. So I just got on my knees and I started to pray and I just kept saying the same thing over. Come on, God, heal it. Come on, God, heal it, you know. Yeah. And uh, I went to sleep one night and I've been praying the same thing over. Come on, God, heal me. And uh, I just dozed off and I felt the spirit. I woke up and I sort of heard the voice. I heard you the first time. It's thanks that will release the blessings. Wow. And I got, and I, it was like the spirit, just inwardly, I just got such a revelation of what it meant. And I got out of bed and I just got on my knees and I cried and I said, forgive me. Um, I didn't really understand. And I don't know that the love of God just came upon me. And I started to just go in prayer and thanks a phrase, yeah. which is prayer to God. Yeah. And I just, spoken tongues and thanked him and continued to thank him. We have to be careful, like I said earlier, how the enemy though will come in. And sometimes I'd find myself say the prayer again, oh Father, heal me. And the spirit would literally say to me, ah, thanks, thanks. And so I continued to go on in thanks. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I was working uh, at the time and it was quite difficult because you've got customers speaking to you and you're, yes, yeah. <laughs> can speak up. Uh, but I just kept, kept on. Yeah. And one day I'm, I'm serving this customer and my ear just went like that. It was like a, a, a drum had been literally opened right through oh. my ear. And I just leapt for joy. My husband yeah. and I were working in the same company. And I leapt up for joy saying, Mark, I've got my healing, I can hear, I can hear. And I was sort of dancing around the shop. And <laughs> he said, fantastic. Go, it's thanks and releases the blessings. Mm -hmm. Because what God showed me and continually has since is thanks is mm -hmm. what you're hoping for. It is belief of hoping for something you've not yet seen. Mm -hmm. It's, and, such a, it's oh. such a key point, Denny, and um, yeah. we were looking at a couple of the verses in Scripture before coming on, mm. and um, in fact we could read one out, it mm. was the one in Ephesians 5.20, yeah. because it's this principle of gratitude that the Holy Spirit really revealed to you, um, and actually, well, the significance of that to God and how, as you say, it is, um, it's showing God our faith by actually, you know, having that gratitude for, for what He has done and waiting for the manifestation of that. Absolutely. So it's um, Ephesians 5.20. Um, it's also in Isaiah, I think Isaiah 61, where it says um, the spirit of praise for the garment of heaviness as well. Yeah, the, the significance of thanking him and having a, um, an attitude yeah. of praise. Yeah. So, praise. Praise and worship, Yeah, you know, is a form of prayer. Yes. Anyway, 
Yeah. But we don't realise the power that it holds. It yeah. releases the enemy's hold. Right. You know, that is something God showed me with praise and worship. Why do we start church with praise and worship? Why does it go back generational? Because the enemy has to flee, has to back off. Mm -hmm. When we praise and worship God, we're forgetting everything. Our hearts and our minds are on God yeah. and on the Lord. And, you know, worship and praise. You know, in any situation, if you're going through problems, financial or sickness or for a lost one or whatever, Praise will release the enemy's hold, and God really showed me that in yeah. that scripture. Yeah, because it's um, Ephesians 5.20, and it says, Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we see this principle being repeated through scripture as well. Yeah. Um, Richard, before we, we come back to you for more of your testimony in the area of finance, one thing that would be really great to pick up on at this point, which I've... Um, picked up on both of your testimonies is the um, the timing because there's um, obviously the symptoms that, that manifest in the case of Valen and when you had your fall uh, and then an attitude of faith which is um, knowing the word of God, mm. receiving the word mm. of God, have, um, releasing faith in the word of God but there being a gap of time between um, standing on the word and the manifestation of the promise mm. and I find that quite interesting. Mm. Um, do either of you have any sort of feedback about that? I think, I mean I, I've seen many miracles. Um, I've seen in a Bible college that we taught there was a gentleman who had stomach cancer and when he came in he was 76 and when he came in he said um, one of the questions I asked him was why do you want to come to Bible college when you're 76 years old? He said, because I'm going to die and I want to know him better than yeah. I know him now. Yeah. And by the end of the year he did, he came waving his mm. uh, right. certificate of complete healing of stomach cancer. Wow. Mm. And that was a process. But then I've seen miracles mm. instant yeah, so with I a broken both. leg right. mm. and they got up and danced on it straight away. But mm -hmm. yeah. it's your faith, I think. And the thanks that goes with it. And perhaps God has a, a different purpose of in course. each of our circumstances. We're all different. Yeah. We're all different. Teaching us something through that time. Perhaps like in your case he revealed to you the principle of gratitude and the power mm. of, of that. So mm. yeah. oh, it's amazing. Yeah. What what I what I learnt on that word thanks mm. and what it actually leads us into of belief mm. and receiving and the thing our hearts are open. Yeah. You know, God is a God of, of, of giving us the truth mm -hmm. and his love and the amount that he's handed us. Yeah. But our walks are all different. Mm. Yes. You know, it, it's mm. individual. It's amazing, actually, how God works in each of our lives, Absolutely. and I, I find it fascinating. And it, Richard, you had some other thoughts as well, didn't you? you, you well, I was, I was going to say, just looking back, um, um, I think you learn, well, I learn much more when you go through the valleys than when yes. you're on the mountaintops. Because so when, when you're on the mountaintops, uh, everything's great, and, you know. Um, but actually, you learn much more about, or we've learned much more about, you know, God's care mm. for us. You know, when Val was blind, I thought, you know, this is terrible. But actually, then when, then she she did what the Bible says, you know, she mm -hmm. spoke to the mountain, and yeah. she told the mountain to to move into the sea, and she didn't doubt in her heart. Yeah. She, and she, and she said, and it says, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and then you shall have it. Yeah. Because it says in Hebrew, Hebrews chapter eleven, it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, yes. the yes. evidence of things not. Seen. Yeah. That's not yeah. supposed to be a pun because you couldn't see. Yeah. But you know that, that yeah. when we're in faith, we're standing on the word of God. You see. Yeah. One way I like to describe it is that we, um, and not everybody knows this, we actually have seven senses. Right. Now this is actually very interesting. Um, um, we don't actually have to go to medical school to learn this, but we're taught we have five senses, five physical senses: our eyesight, our hearing, our taste, our touch, and our smell. Mm -hmm. But actually, God is a God of sevens. Uh, I think you all know that. Yeah. Um, there are seven days in the week, seven colours in the rainbow, seven notes in music, and seven letters to seven churches, seven items in the Holy of Holies, um, and in fact, seven throughout the scriptures. In yeah. fact, Ivan Panin was given the Nobel Prize for 
mathematics, proving that the Bible is supernatural using the myriad chain. Um, you know, seven Can letters, I say seven churches. In there as well, what? the story of Elisha when the with, when the Sh Shunammites, if that's how you pronounce it, her son. Um, well, they thought he was dead, although he to life, but he sneezed seven times as well. Yes. So yes. again, you it's, see this it's all over the place. Reflected. Seven yeah. letters, seven churches. Yeah. And it's all over the place. Um, but the point is that God is a God of sevens we, and, and not fives. So we yeah. have seven senses. And our sixth sense, everybody has that, it's our conscience. Yeah. Romans chapter one, one. Says, our, mm. is, says that when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, and you speak to an unbeliever as well, yes. that is actually, our conscience is actually the Holy Spirit speaking to us. But the seventh sense, only, only believers can have that, only born again Christians can have that. And it's actually the revealed word of God. Mm. And actually, all viewers will be familiar with this. For example, most viewers will believe in creation, for example, rather than evolution. But in society today, if you go to school or university, you're taught that the life years ago mm. out of the primordial slime. Mm -hmm. But what's actually happened here is that um, we've used our seventh sense, which is our rima, it's the revealed word of God, because the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm. And we use that seventh sense and completely overridden everything you hear on ITV or BBC, whatever it is, David Attenborough's shows to say that it all evolved by chance and said, no, the truth is that God created the heavens and the earth. So that's an example of Rima. Mm. And you can do the same again, because most, most Christians watching this program, they know they're going to go to heaven. They know, they've never seen heaven. Yeah. So how would they know? Well, the answer is because the Bible says the blood of Jesus cleans us from all sin mm. and we've been born again. Yeah. And they just, they just know that's the truth because that's the revealed word of God. Well, miracles is just simply a, a progression of that. Um, we don't use our five senses for miracles. We don't use what we can see, touch, taste, smell or hear because those are natural senses and they won't get you a miracle. What we do is we use our conscience to make sure our life is clean. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And then we apply our seventh sense, which is the word of God. And, and, and faith, you see, what we have faith in, it's not our natural ability, it's in the word the faith is. And yeah. as, as it says, my word will not return to me void, Boy, but know. will accomplish that which is set out mm. to accomplish. Mm. Yeah. So just like Denny says, we thank the Lord that this is what has happened, even though we don't see it, because um, it, it, it's, it's, it says uh, we, we have faith in the Word of God, the unshakable Word of God. After all, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, mm -hmm. but my Word will not pass mm -hmm. away. So right. actually this is more important right. and, more, and more durable than, than heaven and earth. Heaven and right. earth will pass away, there will be a new heaven and earth, but my Word will not pass away. So put our faith in this, mm -hmm. and when it comes to the doctors saying we're blind or we have financial problems or whatever it is, which are terrifying, we don't look, touch, taste or smell mm -hmm. What we do is we use our everything our life is, is right before the Lord mm. and then we apply the word of God to the problem. Wow. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. Yeah. And you've also seen this manifest financially as well. You we have, have. You had quite incredible breakthroughs. It's amazing. Yes, we have. Would you share about that? Yes. Well, I, re I'm, I'm, I used to be a GP. Yeah. I was a GP for nearly 30 years and I retired um, when I was 50. Mm. Well, I People retire these days when they're 65 normally, so I retired 15 years too young. So my pension, of course, was actually much smaller than it should have been. It was actually, so what happens? My income went down by 80%. Wow. Now we were quite in debt because <laughs> we'd had a, a, a nice house. In fact, my, my wife's parents lived there as well, uh, which was nice. They had a little flat and everything. And I had three children at university. So I basically did what, a, you know, what one would normally, I got all bank statements out and I had, well, this doesn't work because we were £260,000 in debt and this was in 1997. And in today's terms, I read in your recent testimony that's equivalent of about £400,000 £400, today. It's it is, yeah. yeah. So, um, well, we were, a bit, we were a bit naughty. We put the, uh, the bank statements on the, ta on the kitchen table just to make sure God could see them, <laughs> <laughs> which is really stupid. Don't do that, by the way. <laughs> and we prayed about it. We said, look, we, we've got terrible problems um, because we can't pay the mortgage. We haven't got any money. Um, and you know what it says at the, at the bottom of the mortgage? If you don't pay your mortgage, they're going to repossess your house. Yeah. So we were a bit worried about it. And we prayed about all these debts. And the Lord said absolutely nothing at all about it. 
Because I'll tell you why, it's that Christians are not supposed to be in debt anyway. In yes. Romans 12, it says, Owe no man anything save to love one another. Mm. Christians are not supposed to be in debt. Um, I'm not saying, I'm not putting it anywhere under condemnation, but there is a better way. There is a better way. God's way is much better because uh, in Proverbs it says, um, if, you're in if you owe somebody, it says the, the lender is servant to, um, no, the, the borrower is servant to the lender. And God doesn't want us to be servant to anybody except to him, you see. So God doesn't want us to be in debt. Anyway, so we prayed about it and the Lord said nothing about it at all. Um, and then we prayed a bit more and I started reading the scriptures about money. And I saw that Jesus was a great giver. He didn't... He so our sins could be forgiven. But during his actual earthly ministry, um, it says in Amos 4.4 4, that he... that. Jesus obeyed the law. He was under the law. He, they're supposed to tithe every three days. Amos 4.4 4 says you tithe every three days. Now he gave away huge sums of money. He had a treasurer and uh, for example he, he was going to feed the, the crowd of mm. 5,000 men with yeah. women and children besides. So, which meant there was enough money there. There was eight months, uh, was eight months uh, money there to feed this huge crowd of probably 20,000 people. We won't go down that avenue, but the point is that there was plenty of money around, you see. Mm. So we, we prayed about it, and the Lord said to both of us, we wanted, he wanted us to set up a charity and to travel around the world and give everything away free. So that's what we did. We set up a charity, and we put some money in it. We didn't have a lot, but we put it up. We started up this charity in 1997, and it's got a website. It's called freechristianteaching.org. And we traveled. Um, we started off in the Caribbean and then we ran, went around the States and then we ran, went to Africa, we went to South Africa and then Kenya and Sierra Leone and then we went to Eastern Europe, Bulgaria and a few other countries around there and then we went to India and Pakistan and then we went to the Philippines and my main work now is um, in a very large prison yes. in the Philippines, uh, death row maximum security in the, in the Philippines. There are 18,000 prisoners and it's the largest prison in Asia and we also work very closely uh, with a friend of mine who runs orphanages in Asia. Um, anyway, yeah. the point is we have a lot of uh, teaching on our website uh, on lots of different subjects and downloadable books and movies and all sorts of things. And, uh, but the thing is that everything is free mm -hmm. because Jesus said, freely you have received, Amen. freely give. I'm not saying it's wrong to sell anything, but all I will say is that Jesus never sold anything, did he? Amen. He didn't, uh, he didn't sell anything. Yeah. I can't see any account of Jesus yeah. ever selling anything, so we yeah. thought we'd give it away free. Well, actually, it was the Lord's idea. Yeah. So anyway, we started giving away, everything away free. I wrote a couple of books, and we gave all those away and everything. And all I can tell you is within nine months, the Lord paid off £260,000. It was, And believe it or not, it was seven different large checks, seven of them. <laughs> wow. It was seven. Wow. And also our income started going up, um, remarkably. Um, and we've never really looked back. In fact, every year, the amount of money, I told you before the program, I won't repeat it on air, but yes. how much money goes through our charity is actually quite a lot of money now. Mm. But every year, the amount of money going through our charity increases by about between 30 and 50% per annum, okay. uh, which is remarkable. And now what happens, we have uh, on our website, which is freechristianteaching.org, um, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything, because uh, it's free. But what happens is people around the world, they, they get onto our website, they want our DVDs, they want our books, they want our movies, which is fine. Yeah. We've got uh, p movie makers in America who want to distribute their movies through our charity. That's great. We have most of the um, presenters on Revelation TV. You're going to be on there soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, with, with the DVDs on there, they want them as well. Yeah. Um, but they also say, well, we like what you're doing. We like your work in the prisons. We like your work in the orphanages. How do we send you money? So now we put up a thing and people actually are sending quite large sums of money to us now. We never ask for it, but that's what's happening. So God is in charge and it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. We never ever ask for money, but it just seems to come. And it's a remarkable thing, thing. It's incredible. I mean, and it's a huge sum of money that, that God um, provided through that, those circumstances. But another thing that I find so encouraging about your testimony is just, you know, the faith you had, you, you laid it all out on the table and you really sought the Lord. And mm. um, you, you mentioned he didn't give you an answer straight away, but as you faithfully prayed about this, he did actually give you the guidance you needed. He actually yeah. told you the yeah. steps to take yeah. and you've seen yeah. his miracle working power yeah. completely turn that situation around. It is a Amazing. Well, it's got, uh, it, it doesn't, it didn't end there because yeah. um, 
I'm not saying everyone should do what I did, but uh, or what we did. We actually moved. Uh, we moved from Hampshire, to, uh, sorry, from Hertfordshire down to Hampshire, just to be near the family. Mm. But the Lord clearly told me and my wife don't not to buy another house. Yes. Uh, so we just rent one. It's a beautiful house, actually. <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. We live on a farm, and we and it's a, a big converted barn. barn it? <laughs> a, yes, it's, it's got one of those minstrels galleries. You know what I mean, a minstrels gallery? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. We, but it's not ours. We rent it. Right. Nothing wrong with owning a house, by the way, nothing wrong with a mortgage, but it's just not what the Lord told us to do. So anyway, we just simply put our money in national savings and forgot all about it. But when I was working in death row, um, I met a, um, a, a very close friend of mine who's actually been on tele Revelation TV called Don McIlvenny, and he's actually worked on Wall Street for 42 years, and he actually runs a, 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 a very large company. Um, Anyway, he took me to one side and gave me some uh, very serious financial advice, which I won't repeat on air because I'm not a financial advisor. But if anybody's interested, they can get onto our website, freechristianteaching.org, and they can get the same advice from Don McIlvenny himself as he gave me. And basically, he looks after my affairs, and all I can tell you is astounding. Actually, it's absolutely astounding what has happened uh, financially. Um, We've just been released financially. That's the end of that. <laughs> That's amazing. It's mm. just so encouraging to hear it. I think what's so good about doing a program on this topic is that um, in the kind of culture that we're in, there's a very strong secular kind of mindset, and I think it can easily creep in to um, the church and to our, our faith walk. Um, and I'm just mindful that you often hear testimonies from people in different parts of the world where... Um, God's spirit moves very powerfully to the point where you hear testimonies of people actually being resurrected from the dead. Yes. And um, I just find it so encouraging to actually hear this because we started out with the question, is God still in the business of miracles yes. today? Mm. And through these examples, we're, we're actually seeing God's power manifest. Absolutely. Do you, mm. what, what are your thoughts on that? I've got a friend that, who recently was sick and he was one of the Bible College students mm. and he was taken into hospital and <laughs> he's got an awesome testimony himself yeah. but basically on his belief you know he went into hospital yeah. but he turned it around for God's glory because all of them um, doctors and nurses he just preached God's word that they all became committed Christians and people who were sick come into him for healing which he done while he was in the bed himself and then he got his miracle of healing when all that had been done mm -hmm. and uh, you know he just now is on the streets and yeah. every day and sees the miracles of mm. God touching people yeah. you know as we were talking earlier we see the outer shell of people yeah God is the only one who sees the inner the heart yeah. of people. We can see somebody out there all smiles and you know, but inside they could be totally broken, mm. crying out to God, but they don't know how to share it because they're not Christians. They could be unbelievers that don't know the Lord, don't know how to, but are crying. But yeah. you know, God's in every minute of the day, He is doing a miracle somewhere mm. in someone's life. Mm. And we're blessed to have Christian networks where people can hear those testimonies. Absolutely. Um, mm. But yeah. we're part of that. Mm. You know, we've all got mm. God inside us. Mm. Every Christian out there mm. can pray mm. for someone and see that miracle. And it's what you were saying too, Richard, earlier. I mean, the whole fact of our salvation in mm. itself, being spiritually reborn, mm, sure. is the most incredible of miracles. That's the biggest miracle. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Because yeah. without that, of course, we none of us <laughs> can be good enough to go to heaven. Yeah. We'll go to the other place, which yeah. I don't like to talk about too much, but that's <laughs> what would basically happen. I also like what you said too, that actually, you know, we've received many miracles, like even, even the, the point about our conception, you know, the development of a baby Absolutely. in its mother's womb. Yeah. I mean, all of that inspires awe, and that's another yeah. way of understanding miracles. I think our, um, mm. they call it, you know, the, or you would know this, the autonomic nervous system, you know, the, yeah. our digestion, our respiration, sure. our it's heart. Amazing. I mean, it's that totally is a miracle. Miraculous. It inspires awe it's as absolutely well. absolutely miraculous. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing I've, I always, when I'm talking about this subject, I always think we need to change our mindset yeah. because everyone says, 
I wish I could move into the supernatural, people say that. About, have you ever heard Christians yes. say, I wish I could move yeah. into the supernatural? Um, I'd like to put it, just to say a little bit about that, because yeah. we are all yeah. in the supernatural Amen. now. Yes. There is no natural. There is no natural. Amen. Everything is supernatural. Amen. The universe was created by God. Heavens and earth were created by God. That is supernatural. Mm. I mean, most people believe that in evolution, which is not supernatural, because it's, it's a fairy story. Never couldn't possibly happen. Uh, but the creation of the heavens and the earth from just from nothing, which is what God did, is supernatural. Mm. We God chose us before the foundation of the earth. That is supernatural. Um, we have a, a future which is totally supernatural mm -hmm. in heaven and I've interviewed 300 people who have died in, yeah. in hospital on the operating theatre and mm -hmm. car accidents and strokes and I've written three books on the subject and I know what I have a very good idea of what heaven's like because I've spoken mm -hmm. to so many people who've been there yes yeah. I haven't been there myself but it's just like the book of Revelation at the end of the book of Revelation yeah. but you know we are created in the image of God mm -hmm. we have God's Spirit living in us mm -hmm. and we have a supernatural book and God says um, he says in Joshua, don't let this, this, uh, we have the ability to have miracles ourselves. We just follow the instructions. Yes. And all I can say is that, you know, we actually have found miracles. I've told you just a few, but we actually have an awful lot of them. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, for example, it, it may sound small things, but on, on a sort of everyday basis, we, we were working in South Africa, went speaking in many churches. We were flying back through Zurich and there was going to be a 12-hour delay before we get connection. I don't know why, but something went wrong. Anyway, we just went up to the desk and said, um, can, we, uh, can you just make sure there isn't a cancellation? <laughs> and she looked and said, no, there won't be a cancellation. There can't possibly. It's just before Christmas. There won't be any cancellation. Well, just have a look. And she looked, and as she looked, oh, literally as she oh. looked, there were two cancellations. She said, well, if you get on in 10 minutes, you can go now. <laughs> and I just thought, yes. <laughs> that's, our, that's our God that's of miracles. Yeah. That's yeah. our God of miracles. God. That's, our, that's the favor good. of God. Can I just ask a question? Because I'm just mindful. I like to kind of look at all points in, in a yeah, discussion. Sure. And um, we touched on this before, so I'm not actually expecting an answer, but I would like to kind of put it out there because I'm mindful that um, there could be some people watching who perhaps there's an area of, uh, in the area of healing. They're looking for a miracle. They're looking mm. for a breakthrough. And perhaps it's cancer or something very serious, mm -hmm. they've been praying for a long time, they are um, doing similar things to what, what you've shared about, they know the promises in the word, they're, they're releasing their faith, but there hasn't been a breakthrough, or actually in some instances, a loved one has passed away without seeing that miracle of healing happen or take place. Mm. And um, I'm just really mindful about kind of um, talking about that because it, it is part of people's experience and I know that there is um, mystery sometimes that we don't have all of the answers, we don't, we don't know, um, but I just did want to put that out there because I would hate for people to watch it and feel just so discouraged and, mm. and almost condemned or heavy weighted down by a discussion like this because you know there are other stories as well of, of that happening and I guess it's trying to kind of make sense of that as well um, I mean I don't want to put either of you on the spot but but do you do you have any thoughts about that like I said earlier I think we're all individual yeah you know God knows us all individually he created us all individually um, Yes, there are those that can go to the Lord before such times as they see their healing. But we always have to remember that God always turns things for good. Yes. Something yeah. will come out of it. Mm. Someone will somewhere along the line be blessed. Yeah. You know, whether it's in his peace, in his comfort, in his love, getting to know him. Yeah. Um, the main thing is, I think, is love the Lord, your God. Yeah. And mm. let him love you. It's a relationship walk. The closer you walk with him, the closer and the more you receive from him. Mm. And we don't have all the answers. I mean, mm. Richard here is a doctor. Mm. I don't think any of us have got the full answer. Only no. God himself yes. has that answer. 
And I think it's what you were saying too, Richard, that often through the Valley experiences, through the, through the real difficulties mm. or um, the seeming lack of answers, mm. that God actually teaches us so much as well. We learn a lot about, about Him and about Absolutely. walking close to Him, about dependence, about His sovereignty. Yeah. It's as you were saying, Denny, too, that the scripture that He will use all things for the good of those who are the called on, who yes. love Him. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I guess it's that realization too that there, there are perhaps things we don't understand or have answers for, but sure. that God has a purpose in, mm. in all things, yeah. and He is good. Yeah, yeah. well, absolutely right. Yeah. Well, I mean, we all have problems, of course we do. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, I won't pretend that all of our prayers are answered, of course yeah. they're not. But when we have a problem, what I try and do is look at everything in my life to make sure you know, there isn't anything that God wouldn't approve of. Yes. And uh, very often, you know, the Lord does show me something He doesn't want me to do anymore, or said or thought even that isn't right. Right. Um, I'm far from perfect, <laughs> and uh, you know, God will sometimes use these experiences. And I think we did talk earlier about the sovereignty of God, because yes. um, you know, as a matter of observation, you know, we we do see people who are not healed. I don't. I haven't got the answers to all of this. Yeah. I know my wife gets, seems to get healed very quickly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, I, it's to do with the sovereignty of God. I haven't got the answers to all that. Mm. Um, but I, I, I tell you one thing is I do think it's important to, to put into practice what it says in Mark chapter 11, because a lot of people are, I just want to show you one thing in, in, that, in that little, in Mark 11 verses 22 to 24, something quite interesting actually, it says, uh, um, have faith in God. When you say to this mountain, there's one say, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and do not doubt in your heart, it will be unto you even as you say, two says, then it will be unto you even as you say, three says. It says, um, when you pray, believe that you receive it, and then you shall have it. So there are three says and one believe. Now I think uh, people are quite good on the believing bit, but sometimes they, they let the Holy Spirit down a little bit on the saying bit, because right. I've, I'm sure we've all done this, um, or seen other people do it, but I've even done it myself, and my, and my wife would take me off, you know. Lord that you have healed me and the next morning you say well I'm still sick yes. <laughs> but you know we're, we're moving away from what, the, Lord, what Jesus Lord. told us to do mm. he said when you pray believe that you receive it and then you will have it he didn't say change your mind because you haven't seen the results mm. using your five senses stick with the Word of God until you get the results yeah I think what we have to understand also is when people are sick and I've had many people in my family who've gone through sickness. My father died two years ago. Um, but the good came from that is I did the service and we had 11, 12 salvations. So wow. God turned it around for yes. good. Yeah. But we have to understand that there could be people watching the show who are in that low state where they're crawling. They're not up there reaching out. They're actually down there crawling. Yes, yeah. Thinking this is it. I'm not seeing, I'm not feeling, I don't know you. Mm. But God would say, no matter how you feel, speak the word. Yeah. He spoke the word yeah. and it became so. Mm. There is power in God's word. Mm. And the more you speak the word, no matter how you feel, the more you speak God's word, the more the manifestation will come to pass because mm. God's word does never come back void. Yes. Mm. And we have That's to it, yeah. hang on mm. to what we've been given. God knows our weaknesses. Mm. He knows there be times when we are low mm. and we can't get up there. We just, no matter how much we seem to struggle, yeah. we can't just, you know, get there. But the Lord would say, hang on in there. Mm. He knows, his word says, yes. we may stumble but we'll never fall flat on our face. So yeah. there's always yeah. hope. And it's what you say, that his word doesn't return to him void, Amen. but achieves that for which Amen. it's sent. Yeah. And if you're yeah. having a problem, cry to him. Yeah. You know, love him and have faith in God's word. Yeah.
Mm. We're going to go to a quick music break. Mm. And when we come back, we are going to look at scripture because it is full. In preparation know, yes. for this, I was thinking, I'll just look at a few miracles in, in, in scriptures. <laughs> and I was really blown away. It was actually really encouraging, again, to see God's hand throughout the Old Testament in the ministry of Jesus, through the life of Paul and Barnabas. I mean, it's throughout scripture. It is amazing that, that God's purpose for his miracles as well, for our provision, our preservation, um, our healing. It's amazing. So we will look at a few of those um, when we come back from the music break. Um, and I'll also be reading some of the emails that have come in. Um, God bless you. Hi, welcome back to She Matters. We're talking about miracles today, the miracle working power of God. And during the program, some of you have sent in texts and emails giving testimony about what God has done in your lives. It's amazing. So I will just read out a few that have come in. Um, the first says, Hi, Birgit, Dr. Richard and Denny. We may suffer distress and disease in the body, but if we have solic union with the stripes of Jesus, we are truly healed. Shalom, Michael. Mm -hmm. That's encouraging. Um, and God definitely still does miracles. My daughter fell and hit her teeth on the steel of a high chair. Her left front tooth went, to, went back about halfway um, into the gum, and this was two days before her second birthday. After my initial panic, we prayed and committed the matter to Jesus Christ. We also believed and started confessing that her tooth would grow out again very shortly, and praise Jesus, it has. Her yeah. birthday was in December, and this miracle totally supersedes um, what the doctors and the, the views of the doctors and the dentists. With God, all things are possible. Amen. God bless you. And that's from Ade Ume. So thank you so much. Um, another one that's come in, I, I have suffered with ME for so many years. I've prayed for so long for healing. I'm feeling so low and desperate. Mm. Love in Yeshua's holy name, and that's from Carol. So perhaps, um, Demi, I know you mentioned you'd like to pray at some mm. point, so perhaps we could pray for Carol. Um, and we have another one saying, hello everyone. I found that my debts have reduced lately, reaping what I've sown, that's from Amen. Beverly. Mm -hmm. And another one from Jacqueline, and she's saying, Good afternoon to you all. It's very good to see you, and thank you for such a wonderful topic of discussion. I'd like to ask the doctor a simple question. I heard him say that he was born again in 1974. That's a, that's a long while, and I'm assuming that he's seen a lot and learnt a lot too. What is the one thing that he would say that sums up who God, um, who God is to him um, without underestimating uh, the magic? So what would you say, wow. Richard, that sums up who God is to you? Who God is to yeah. me? He's my father. Yeah. <laughs> he's my father. He's, he's my father. Um, and we all get to know him better. Mm. Through all these miracles, we just see that God is a, is a, is a real father yeah. to us. Mm. Yeah. That's so, that's so great. Well, we have probably, I think, about 10 minutes left on the program, and I know we also want to pray, yes. um, and you have an encouraging scripture, but also, Richard, um, we, we mentioned before the break that we would touch on 
kind of inspire our faith mm. in this area. Mm. And you were saying during the break that the story of Elisha uh, and the, Sh I think it's a Shunammite wo woman and her yeah. son, is an, uh, that's an incredible story that in itself. That's a most remarkable so, story. Yeah. We're not going to have time to read through the actual scriptures mm -hmm. in 2 Kings 4. Yeah. But this was a woman who was not a believer at all right. to start with. And Elisha came on the scene. And uh, the Shumanite woman said, said, to, uh, said to, to Elisha, this is your, uh, your Lord, not your God, not my God, but your God, indicating that she was far away from the Lord. But she was, uh, hadn't had a child. And Elisha said, in one year, you will bear a little child in your arms. And that's yeah. what happened. So she, interesting, she got very, very excited and put, this, put uh, Elisha on the roof of her house. And that's where he stayed. Mm -hmm. And she got very, very interested in Elisha's hotline to the Lord, you see. <laughs> and Elisha taught her a great deal. And this little child, she loved this little child. Um, the most wonderful thing ever happened to her, she had this little child. Mm -hmm. But a tragedy happened. When the child was 12 years old, the child went out into the field with the reapers, with, with the father, and he had a very bad headache. Now, it doesn't say, but I suspect he had a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is a very nasty headache. Mm. And he came back, and, and they put the little child's body in the mother's arms, just outside the front door of the house, and he died. Now, ladies, how would you feel if you are holding in your arms Dead, of your own dead son. Mm. How would you feel? Absolutely devastated. Devastated. Yeah. Absolutely devastated. But she had been taught for 12 years that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yeah. So what came out of her mouth next was going to decide what happened to this little child. Now she felt terrible. She, her blood pressure was very high, she had a tachycardia, her pulse was racing, she had a pallor, she felt sick, her pupils were dilated, um, she was hyperventilating, she felt absolutely terrible. Wow. But she decided she was going to do two things. She put the child on the roof of the house, on the bed of Elisha, yeah. and then she saddled up the donkey, took the servants and went off to see Elisha, who was on Mount Carmel. And the father said, why are you going to Mount Carmel today? Is all well with you? Is all well with the sun? Mm. Why are you going to Mount Carmel today? It's not a new moon festival. It's not a Passover today. Why are you going? Is all well with you? And he, she said those three words. It is well. It felt like no. she wasn't using her five senses. She wasn't using the dead child on the roof. She wasn't using her taste, her smell, her touch, her taste, her feeling, any of those things. She was using the word of God because Elijah had raised somebody from the dead. And she knew that Elisha had a double anointing and he had the power to raise the child from the dead. But she wasn't going to destroy everything by saying anything wrong. And even the servant of Elisha, who he sent out first to the son, yes. um, when he came back, because there had been no change in the son's condition, That's but interestingly, he didn't actually say he's still dead. He actually said he hasn't awakened. That's right. So he, he, he viewed just, it he, as same thing. Same so thing. So he came back. So same yeah, thing. I found that quite interesting yeah, too. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. That's right. So she I, I, hadn't confessed yeah. the death of her child. Yeah. She was actually still proclaiming as him alive. Yes. And that's right. That's what we were speaking earlier about the power of God's word, mm -hmm. no matter yeah. how you feel. Yeah. yeah. By speaking, your tongue holds life or death. Yeah. That's you right. speak positive or you speak negative. Speak positive, you speak life. Speak negative, you speak death. Well, Jesus himself illustrated this so well himself. Yes. Two very simple little things. In Luke chapter 8, there's the, um, Jairus' daughter. We don't know how old she was, but she was very dead. But Jesus said something mm. quite different. He said, this child is not dead, she is she just sleeps. sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. So he said something very positive about a dead child. In fact, he said, little child arise, yeah. speaking to a dead body. Mm -hmm. But to show the negative side of th things, Jesus spoke to a fig tree once. It's in Mark chapter yeah. 11. Yeah. And he said, may you never bear fruit again. And it killed the tree. Mm. 
Next day, the, the tree was dead. So what comes out of our mouth That's is right. really, really important. And actually, mm -hmm. to pick you up on that story of Jesus going to Jairus' house, even on the way to perform that miracle, another miracle was performed mm -hmm. because that's when the woman with the issue of blood... That's right. For years, she'd had um, this issue. She'd been to see physicians. Nothing had changed. She just touched... She had faith that if she touched the hem of his garment, that healing would come to her. Jesus felt the power go from his very being and turned in the crowd. I mean, he was absolutely hemmed in on it. every corner by so many people, but he felt the power go, mm -hmm. and he turned around, and he said to the woman, your faith has made you well. Mm. Um, so that in itself, a miracle on the way. Yeah. But I mean, as, as we've said, we don't have time to actually read all the passages, but no, actually haven't. just to encourage yeah. us all and the viewers, yeah. um, just a few miracles that you might like to follow up on. I was just giving this some thought before coming on today. But even in the Old Testament, if we look at God's purposes for his miracles, um, there's, you know, the preservation of his people, the provision for his people. I was mm. thinking of the parting of the Red Sea. Yes. In itself, I mean, the physical laws, God is, God is the creator and the physical laws are subject to him, the parting of the Red Sea to make way for his people, the provision of manna and quail from, from heaven, God mm. provided food for That's his right. people. In the New Testament, we see um, the first miracle that Jesus performed at the wedding in Cana, where he um, changed water into wine. He fundamentally changed water into, into another substance. Yeah. So we see, um, we see his miracle working power reflected in that. The fact that he spoke to the storm, again, physical laws subject to him as creator, and he said, be still, and the, the storm was stilled. You know, I mean, again, a miracle sure. um, in, in that. Yeah. Um, the feeding of the 5,000. Yeah. I mean, that story is incredible as well. Yeah. Um, and even with Elisha, you know, the, the oil, he, he said yeah. to the woman, well, what do you have? She had oil mm. and um, he mm. instructed her as to what to do. And it just kept replenishing and replenishing. Yeah. Yeah. Again, God's provision. It's, the scripture's full. It's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Jesus, yeah. Jesus is a miracle. Yeah. And he's our miracle for life today. Mm. And that's, you know, the mm. main key. Mm. Yeah. We are in New Testament. We are in Jesus Christ. Mm. And... Deuteronomy, mm. if you go to the Old Testament, just stay in Deuteronomy 28. Yeah. That gives you every blessing mm. out there. Mm. And it'll tell you, if you don't do it right, you're going to the curses. We have one minute left. So um, closing thought from you too, Richard, but also I know, Denny, you had a scripture and mm. you, perhaps you could pray for Carol with Emmy. Yes. Who, she's feeling very desperate and just a quick word of prayer okay. would be great. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Carol and anybody else out there Turn to Psalm 100 and just meditate and speak that word out every day until you see your healing. And remember, hope for things not yet seen because you will see it. God's word never comes back void and just rebuke the enemy. Father, we just lift up Carol and anybody else out there, Lord, who may be sick at this time. And we say, Father, we command the enemy's hands off those people. We say, Father, they have no rights over your children. They all belong to you. Your word states that you made us, you created us, and we are for your blessing for, for, to live and go forward proclaiming your glory, Father. So, Lord, we just thank you that Carol is healed by the blood and the stripes of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Amen. Thank you. Richard, thank you so much for Lovely coming to, to share these testimonies. It's Lovely been such a blessing today. Mm. Um, Denny, thank you for your input too. And um, we pray That's the sure. program has been a blessing to you. Um, and may the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you. See you again next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>